You're listening to the Social Media Addicts Podcast on the phillytech.org netcast network. Thank you to our sponsors, aweber.com, wistia.com, and getflywheel.com. Check them out today. And we are now live. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 10. I'm your host, Seth Goldstein, and with me I have my amazing co-host, Jody Rains. Hey Seth, how are she's, you? She's a cuter one over there, so oh, I'll, I'll leave it. I'll leave it on here on her the whole podcast because if you look at this ugly mug. So anyhow, first off, we want to start for some business here. Um, if you want to support the show, I mean, you haven't heard the show yet, so you should support us though. Um, go to Patreon.com/slash/PhillyTechOrg. Um, throw us fifty cents, throw us a dollar. You know, helps us with our overhead. Uh, we really appreciate it. Also, we are now on Stitcher. So if you want to listen to us on that platform, feel free. All of our shows are on that sh- on that network as well. So check out us out on Stitcher. And our sponsors for today's podcast are the great Wistia, A. Weber, and Flywheel. So we'll talk more about them after we get through some stories. Shall we get started, Jody? Absolutely. Would you like to start? I'll have it ladies first. Okay. Well, you know, Twitter, a lot of people complain about Twitter because they say it doesn't do anything in terms of generating sales. Well, evidently, it generated $716 million in, um, in auto sales in 2013, which is kind of an interesting thing. Um, if there's one thing that marketers need to learn about Twitter, it's that you can make a big impact with a small message. It may be trickier than Facebook marketing. But the sheer number of Twitter marketing success stories is evidence that the platform is value to marketers and advertisers. Critics, yeah, they want more hard evidence, but Twitter recently partnered with MarketShare to do a study on the effectiveness of Twitter marketing on auto sales. And the results from the study show that Twitter not only works for auto sales, but has generated over $700 million in car sales. Pretty crazy stuff, huh, Seth? Yeah, I mean, I know, I know when... Um... When Google Plus started, they were talking about using it for auto sales. You know, walking people in, in a hangout, walking them into a, a showroom, and you know, doing doing sales via hangouts. But it's interesting that you can do it through Twitter too. Well, I'm not sure if that's exactly what they're doing, but what's interesting, you know, like when you look at the different models of cars, what they're finding is that the luxury auto sales are doing much better. So for every dollar invested in Twitter marketing. Luxury compact auto sales brought in $17.80 in revenue, which is pretty amazing. Um, That's wild. I know. Mid-sized cars, a smaller amount, $7.90 in revenue for each dollar invested. And I guess it makes you kind of wonder about who's um, using Twitter, who's um, listening to Twitter. When you think about luxury compact, I mean, it is a tech centric audience. It is a younger skewed Well, Tesla, I mean, if you think about it, I mean, I, I follow Tesla just because they're cool and, you know, whatnot. Uh, not like I can, I can afford a Tesla or anything like that, but I mean, yeah. the, I mean, I would love a Tesla, but, you know, I hear they're coming out, speaking of Tesla, I hear they're coming out with a, um, with a um, sub, sub $40,000 one soon. Hmm. So, but, but still, I mean, I mean, I can see if you're looking at Maseratis or if I mean, depends, I mean, tech-centric people tend to have more money, I guess. I don't know. Well, you know, and part of it could also be um, there's an interesting phenomenon that happens with social media, and that is if you're asking your friends and you say, hey, can you give me a recommendation, and they jump in and they start suggesting stuff, mm-hmm. even if you've never actually met this person in real life, you feel like um, it takes it out of the realm of advertising and puts it more into the realm of word of mouth. Mm-hmm. So it, it kind of makes sense in a way that you know using a, you know Twitter because you do feel like you you meet people and you you feel like you have a camaraderie with them and you feel like they're a person and not a marketer. You know it, it kind of makes sense that it would be more powerful than traditional advertising in some ways if used mm-hmm. effectively. If used effectively, it's always only always if you do it use it effectively. So. Um, I guess we're going to go to our next second Twitter story. Twitter is partnering with Gender Equality Group to fight online harassment. Um, lately, Twitter has been a real cesspool for harassing, and I, you know, you know, everything after Robin Williams died, you know, the people were saying that Zelda Williams was terrible, and I mean, people can hide behind the, the, the statue of um, anonymity, um, and and so Twitter is now working with Gender Equality Group called. Women, Action, and Media, WHAM. 
uh, to address online harassment. The companies have started a pilot program where all users are encouraged to, re to report abuse via an online tool developed by WAM. The gender equality group will then investigate the reports and will send validated complaints directly to Twitter. So, I mean, I guess this is a little bit more than the report button, I hope. Hmm. Dirty. I hope so, yeah. I mean, you think about it, it it's kind of like a easy way for people who are bent on um, being destructive or trolls, you know, um, being mean. So I, I'm glad to see that there's some attention being paid to it. Um, it's been far too easy for people to be disruptive and derogatory through social media. Absolutely. Yeah. I, just, I just wonder if this is, since it's women in action and media, if it's, if it's just you know, geared towards women. I mean, I know men get harassed on Twitter too. I mean, it's not just, I mean, it is a gender thing, and it tends to be more slanted towards women, but, you know, I mean, I mean, men, you know, of all shapes and sizes get harassed as well. I mean, it's just, I wonder where, you know, if it's going to be a broad, a broad um, coalition, you know, that where they go in and they look at everybody, or is it just going to be like, you know, this woman was harassed? I don't know. It's the, the, the fact that it's called Women Action and the, and the Media makes me wonder if it's based on gender lines, like if they're, if they're going to be predicting women online. Honestly, women get harassed a lot more than men, but... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know whether it's necessarily um, only women. Um, I agree with you. But um, evidently, there's a reporting tool that's being created. So mm -hmm. I imagine that, you know, people who are being harassed will report it regardless of gender, you know? Mm -hmm, absolutely. I mean, the, the Jacqueline Friedman, the executive director of WHAM, I, I really don't like the acronym, but it is what it is. We're glad that, we're glad that Twitter recognizes that the best way to ensure equality, free, equally free speech for all users on their platform is to ensure that all users are, are equally free to speak without being targeted by harassment, abuse, and threats. So, I mean, I guess it's a good thing. I mean, this whole thing with Gamergate, you know, where, where you know, Twitter users were really going up against, the, you know, female gamers, and I mean, I mean. Twitter has been accessible for a while now. I mean, a lot of people are, are kind of against using Twitter because of, of the accessibleness of the it. The other thing that, that I find that I like more about Twitter these days, in the early days, there were all these bots that were crawling all over the place, you know? And I mm -hmm. think, you know, it, it went from the stage where it was mostly people to then, then suddenly being overwhelmed by the Britneys, that's what I call them, um, you know, that just, like, overpopulated and, oh, yeah. and kind of took over. And now they've kind of like settled down a little bit, and it seems like it's getting back to being real people. So, unfortunately, it does, however, leave places for the trolls to exist. So, um, I'm glad to see that, you know, they're they're doing something about it. Um, but but Seth, don't we have a word from our sponsor? Yes. Um, would you like to do it since my computer stalled? Certainly. Sponsor break. Today's show is sponsored by Wistia. Wistia is a video hosting and analytics platform that helps businesses get the most out of online video. We use Wistia. <laughs> this sounds so funny. We use Wistia here at Philly Tech Org because it's way more professional than YouTube, and the data Wistia provides us helps us understand exactly how our content is being consumed. Hopefully, it's being consumed. <laughs> In a good way. Um, first of all, Wistia has a ton of free resources on their site, and that helps with anyone who's just getting started with video. You can find tutorials on lighting, editing, choosing the right microphone, and there's an entire community dedicated to helping to improve your video. So if I, if I didn't mention this, they do have a free version of their service that can hold up to 50 videos, which is a fair amount of video. So mm -hmm. go ahead and check them out. It's Wistia. W-I-S-T-I-A dot com. The product's awesome. The learning resources are super helpful. And most importantly, the team over there is full of really genuine folks. Uh, <laughs> and actually, I interviewed one of the um, genuinely good folks, um, Ezra uh, Fishman. He's the director of marketing over at, what, over at Wistia. I interviewed him today for the interview show. So that's live on, on the stream as well. So... If you go to fightech.org, you can check out that interview as well. So, very cool. So, <coughs> excuse me. Amazon product. This, this looks really fascinating. Yeah, it's kind of creepy. Alexa, no. Creepy? 
Um, Amazon has released their own Google Now replacement, only it's an appliance. Cool. Yeah, and so essentially it's a cylinder, and you can put plug it in, and you can say the keyword Alexa. What is the square root of 55? And then she'll respond to you in like a how to, you know 2000 the Space Odyssey voice, the female version of that. The square root is the answer. You know the answer is you know, and it's always listening. So pretty much Amazon is always listening to you, even though it, it technically you have to say Alexa. But what if you're you have a daughter named Alexa? Well, I think you can give it whatever name you want, can't you? Because I can name it Jody. You, you can get a wake word to wake it up, and um, they're hoping oh, wow. it's going to be a lifelong friendship. <laughs> if you want to know the news, they can stream it. If you want to settle a bet, they'll call up the information you need. If you want to add something to your shopping list, Echo and Amazon, happy to send it to you. Oh, of course they're happy. I mean, it's Amazon after all. I mean, it's a brilliant piece of equipment, honestly, and and. I, they kept it under wraps. I mean, this disappeared one day. I was like, "Is this a joke?" That's an it's it's insane. Well, so how much does it go for? Um, it's one hundred ninety nine dollars if you're not a Prime member. It's ninety nine dollars if you're a member of Prime. Okay. So under about hundred bucks. I so need this. If so, you get one, buy me one, Jody. Okay. Well, so. I want one so bad, even though I think it's kind of creepy. Okay. Well, they're not sure whether it's going to be a blockbuster success. Um. Well, who's ever sure if it's going to be blockbuster success, though? I mean. Well, yeah, but but I guess the question is like, you know, how much artificial intelligence do you really feel comfortable with in your home? You know, um, especially because it connects to an e-com platform. But yeah. honestly, honestly, Jerry, the thing is, is that like a lot of things don't get me weirded out and scared, but this really does. I think I don't really need Jeff Bezos listening to everything that goes on in my house. Well, I mean, you, you, him and his my nap, my nap, what is it? him and his evil laugh. You know, okay. you know, you know, Jeff Bezos is known for his laugh, so I can just imagine him listening to going he 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 he. Are know, they I, are these things available now? Um, they are available for pre-order. You have to be invited, invited to order one. Invited to give them one hundred and ninety-nine dollars. I agree because that's kind of like the way that. Um, we do things these day these days. Like if you want to be um, on social media, like that horrible thing called Ello, you know you had oh, to get God. invited. Yeah, that was the only thing that was special about it. <laughs> you had to be invited. But uh, I mean, you know, I mean, they did that with Google Plus when they rolled it out. There's all these things where if you're extra special, you get early attention. So and I think that's a smart way to handle it. It's by yeah. invitation only. So so you can ask it. Will it rain tomorrow? Set an alarm for 8 a.m. Um, how, how many teaspoons are in a tablespoon? And actually, there's a very funny um, parody of this. Yeah, of course, it was, it, it's prime for par prime, no pun, pun intended, prime for parody. Um, pretty much what happened is, uh, you know, a a parody group put, put out, kept the same video. I guess and, all, and then they, what they did is they just dubbed over her voice, and it was pretty funny. Like, shouldn't you know what, you know, how many, how many, um, shouldn't you know who Abraham Lincoln is? Like, <laughs> then you go to high school, like that kind of stuff. It's pretty funny. Check it out, um, Amazon Echo parody. It's pretty funny. Very cool. I, I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to have to check that out. <laughs> Maybe I did get an invite and I just didn't know about it. But, um, yeah, you never know. You never know. about things that are kind of like creepy or, um, you know, knowing too much. You know, recently Facebook introduced um, some new tools to make it easier for users to see which of their friends are appearing most frequently in their news feeds. You can configure the app to show less of those friends' posts or to stop seeing the posts altogether even though they're still your friends. Um, I like that idea because I mean a lot of times I want to be friends with somebody and I want to, I, like I want to go to their page. I want them to show up in my feed. I want to know uh, consciously. I want to go see what they have to say. Like, I, I like to have Jody in my stream. But like there's other people that, that like aren't as important. I, as I hear you. But I think, honestly, it's the more they try to fix it and make it better. They break it. Yeah, because, and here's the thing. I mean, if you think back in time, it used to be as things were happening, when you went online, you would see things in real time. Then they changed the um, edge rank, and they decided that you should see the posts that are most popular. Oh, so God. It's kind of like some weird um, amalgamation of whatever's happening in the moment that bubbles to the top because more people comment on it. 
And you know, I have some friends that are really good at gaming that. You know, they'll put something controversial out there and um, fuel commentary because they, they want to be on top all the time. Um, and then I have other friends, I mean, who have equally interesting things to say, but unless I go looking for them because they don't have a lot of comments, it just filters down to the bottom. I see stuff from you, Jody, that happened. Like, oh, Jody's on her bike. I thought she was working today. No, Jody was on her bike last Saturday, and it's Wednesday now. And I'm like, all right, thanks for showing me Jody on her bike. Yes, Jody's very cute when she rides her bike, but, like, it was on, like, show it to me on, on Saturday. And right. Show it to me on Wednesday, know, next Wednesday. Like three days later. And, you know, the, the thing, too, is that um, I find that to be very confusing because it's not, it's not that necessarily um, it's news-related, but... When somebody posts something, like I had the situation with my sister when she passed away, um, and now suddenly for some reason it starts bubbling up again and people start remarking on it, it should be more in line with when things happen, I think. It shouldn't be... It's so off. It's, it's just it's it so is. off. Of, like, it's not a perfect algorithm. I don't know. And it may be, maybe it's trying to teach us that we should look at the dates of things, but... Um, I noticed that LinkedIn's doing something similar as well, where I'm getting comments on things that were posted well over a year ago. Yeah, honestly, I don't know where to find the stuff I posted yesterday. I know, right? I post stuff into the ether constantly on LinkedIn. And every once in a while, I'll bubble up and say, hey, so-and-so liked it. I'm like, well, I can't even find it to respond back. Honestly, you know what LinkedIn needs? This is, a little going off, this is going off into the woods a little bit here, but LinkedIn needs an instant messenger, just like Facebook Messenger. Well, it, does. Messenger. it doesn't. It has messages, well, which is very kludgy. It doesn't have an instant messenger. Yeah, it doesn't I, have an instant messenger. Whereas, like, I have people that I wanted to send them a quick note, not a formal email. Like friends of mine, you know, I want to, you know, have a chat with them on LinkedIn because that is a professional conversation. Instead, I have people who, who are business colleagues uh, talking about business with me on Facebook Messenger. I'm like, dude, like, if anything, go in the Google chat because that's at least archived, so I can go back and refer to it. Like, right. Our mutual friend, you know, Susan, she was for the longest time was uh, writing me stuff for, to do on her website in, hi, Susan, <laughs> she watches. Um, hi, Susan. But she, but, she, but she used to always IM me through a Facebook chat. I'm like, Susan, let's get you in Google Apps. Let's get you in there and this, you know, ding me over on, um, on the app side because that way I can, like, go back and refer back to what the things you want me to work on, so. Right? Yeah. Yeah, so we'll talk about Facebook Messenger, which is apparently a real behemoth a little bit later in the show. But now let's thank our second sponsor, Flywheel. So you can find them at getflywheel.com. Flywheel is a managed WordPress hosting platform built specifically for designers and creative agencies. Flywheel makes it simple to build, build launch, and manage client sites with easy-to-use dashboards built for, from the ground up with, for the modern web designer. With nightly backups, which I can attest to, are very awesome. I'm a, I'm a client. Um, blazing fast load times, which is incredible. If you've actually noticed the way Philly Tech was when we first launched it, and now they're our sponsor, and they give us free space, and it's incredible. It's like night and day. It's really zippy. Um, blazing fast load times, WordPress specific security, and awesome support team. Hi Dan. I talk to Dan on a daily basis. Hi Dan. Um, <laughs> A full of WordPress developers. Fivel helps thousands of designers across the world launch projects every day. So we thank them. I mean, I, I use them for all my client sites. They're, inc they're an incredible service. I'm really glad we found them, and I'm really glad that they decided to be a sponsor. So, so Jody, what's going on with, between the FCC and their boss, the president? Oh, my goodness. Well, you know, the, pr President Barack Obama presented a net neutrality plan advocating for the Federal Communications Commission, the FCC, to reclassify broadband under Title II of the Telecommunications Act. And That's mouthful. Yeah, I know, but it, it, it's not anything that was really a huge surprise. Um, what the president proposed isn't particularly new, no blocking, no throttling. Those are the same ideas that we've heard before. Other members of our government have already produced more detailed plans that include similar points, but the president did get wireless correct, stating that he believes that the FCC should make these rules fully applicable to broadband, mobile broadband as well. Mm -hmm. um, he called stripping away some parts of Title II that don't apply to ISPs in his plan, making the rules less unpalatable to those companies. Um, and then there was a, 
an expectation that the FCC would act on net neutrality in December, and it doesn't look like that's going to happen. That slipped maybe early 2015, maybe not. Um, there's really kind of a lack of a consensus. There's increasing legal and technical uh, disputes, and there's these hybrid solutions that are coming up. So it doesn't look like this is going to be settled anytime soon. Yeah, uh, it's it's a mess. I mean, I mean, I personally, I feel like there's a right answer is don't throttle the internet. That's that simple, but it's not that simple. So yeah, well, and uh, I so, would disagree. Oh, uh, definitely. So here, here's a little bit of a sad story here, and how social media can be used for the worst. Everyone remembers Sandy Hook, um, mm -hmm. the massacre in, at Sandy Hook um, Middle was middle school, no elementary school, elementary where school. a lot of kids were killed. Um, today, in Newtown, the Newtown, Connecticut high school was locked down after a threat, a social media threat. I mean, seriously, guys. I mean, this is ridiculous. Like, control your kids. It's not that simple, but it's just like, you know, it makes my, I mean, I'm a father of a two-year-old. It makes me scared to send him off to school every day. Like, what kind of nuts is going to go in there and start shooting up the place? It's crazy, you know? And, and, and the reason why we're talking about it on this show is because there was a social media aspect, is that the, that the threat came over social media. Well, and I think the, the, there's a couple lessons here. Okay, the first thing is threats over social media, like you said, Seth. I mean, that's kind of like a new way of, making a threat, but what's really interesting is that it was picked up because, you know, we're, we're suffering from an illusion of thinking that maybe people aren't listening, and in fact, evidently they are. So kudos to the Newtown um, School for, for picking up on it. Um, and, you know, again, it's they lock down the kids in the classes trying to prevent um, visitors from entering the building in case there was a, an external threat, but the reality is that it's become easier and easier through social media to make these kinds of threats, and um, it's sad. It, I, I think it's sad, at least. It's very sad. Well, let's end up on a more, I'm not sure if it's a um, happy note or a creepy note, but um, or a, an amazing note, but a half billion people use the Facebook Messenger app on a daily basis. That and, is incredible. Yeah, but you know what, Seth, I mean... It's it's an interesting statistic, but when you consider the numbers of people who use Facebook and the fact that you can't message unless you use the Messenger app because you're kind of locked out of any other way of messaging, um, I don't think it's that um, surprising. Yeah, that, that, that surprising is a good good way of saying it. Um, and a lot of people are resentful of the app; they don't like it. Oh, if you're resentful of an app, like seriously, you can be resentful of people. You can't be resentful of an inanimate object. Well, they felt that they were pushed into downloading the software. They were happy messaging from within Facebook's main app. I, honestly, I here's here's my frustration with it. I, I, you know, you'll be in Facebook and then you see that you've got a message, and you go to click the message, and suddenly you're pulled out of Facebook into the messaging app, and it's then you have to get back into Facebook to continue doing what you're doing. So, I, I kind of feel like they shot themselves in the foot with it. I. It's not as fluid as I think it should be. In my, in my yeah, but honestly, I like it because I don't have to go into Facebook and to message with people. I don't know. That's my, I mean, honestly, that's my pick of the week is the Facebook messaging app. Let's just get it over and done with right now. As much as I hate to admit it, I actually use it a lot, and I find it very useful. So that was my pick of the week. But let's go on and thank a sponsor. A Weber is a local email service provider based out in Shalfont, Pennsylvania. They're local to the Philadelphia region, and they've been in business for 16 years. AWeber is helping entrepreneurs, agencies, and small businesses connect with their customers through email marketing. AWeber is more than just an easy-to-use email marketing platform. It allows customers to integrate with blog platforms, social networks, landing page generators, and other tool sets to succeed in digital marketing. They even integrate with Wistia, which, I, which, I, which, which we have played with. Why customers choose AWeber for the easy-to-use easy interface, strong deliverability, relevant integrations, best customer best solutions team in the business. Um, AWeber has a mobile app, so you can kind of check, you know, your stats. And they have a new app coming out where you can actually, when this, you're at an event or you're hosting an event, you can actually type in people, opt people into your list there. You can sign up there, and then it goes through the whole checking there. It says mobile, which is nice. Um, and there's always more stuff coming out every week from AWeber. So check them out, aweber.com. You probably, if you sign up for our email list, 
um, at, at um, sscl.bz slash 3s. Sorry, I, I screwed up the domain name. If you go there, it takes you to our sign-up page. So sign up for the email blast that I send out every, not on a regular basis, but I send them out when we have a new sponsor, when there's something of news to say, I send it out. So sign up. I promise I won't spam you. So. Okay. And, um, yeah, so, Jerry, what's your pick of the week? Okay, so my pick of the week is um, a relatively new app. It's available in the um, Apple App Store. I think it might also be Android, but I'm not sure. Um, and the app is called Zarfo, and it was developed by a brilliant young man from Australia named Andrew Cunningham. It's a startup. It's one of his first applications. And what I like, what it does is um, it's a way to um, socially broadcast what's happening. So Of course, it's not for Android yet. I'll go figure. Oh. It's, coming, it's coming soon to play, at Google Play. Okay. Well, and what's nice is it integrates with Facebook. Uh, mm -hmm. You can broadcast, uh, you know, at any time, or you can view other people's broadcasts. Um, there were other apps that tried to do this before, but I think Zarfo, what's kind of nice about it is it's got some... Um, stick to itiveness because, like I said, it does integrate nicely with the other platforms. Mm -hmm. So um, I hope you'll check it out. It's Z-A-R-F-O, Zarfo.com. And there is a web interface, which I'm signing up for right now okay. in real time so we can possibly take a look at it. Very good. And, uh, and, and how did you find out about it, Jody? Um, well, Andrew is a friend, and he's also on Tech Webcast. He's, he's one of the oh. hosts at Tech Webcast. So, he has another. Oh, yeah, I heard. I heard that one. Yeah, he. Has, I heard that. I heard that episode. Yeah, he has another app that he does that he did, which is kind of fun, called Rewind, and he's R W N D, and um, it's mm. very simple. It's just an app where you um, take a video and then it plays it backwards, like backwards and forwards. So that's it's funny. Fun, simple but fun. So you can check that one out too. Yes, um, actually, it's it's an app, so it's not a um, web app. I'm confused. Yeah, anyway, I'll check it out. Actually, you know, it's iTunes Australia, so it's Zarfo. So you know, next time you talk to them, tell them to um, make an Android app. Speed it up, buddy. Speed it up. No. Huh? Well, you'll talk to him yourself too. I will. He's you know, from here is a good guy. So, so that's our show for the, that's our show for today. Um, we record this every Tuesday at. 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I don't know what that is, UTC. What is that? They're four hours ahead or behind of us? I don't know. They'll figure it out, but it doesn't really matter because it's a podcast, so who knows what... We'll do it after the fact, so you definitely check us out at fullytech.org. You can check us out on Stitcher. You can check us out on iTunes. You can check us out on Pocket Casts. And connect with us. Follow us. You can find me on Twitter as sunswept, S-U-N-S-W-E-P-T. Mm -hmm. Um, or the usual places as Jody Rains or as Webmarcom, webmarcom.net. And Seth, where do we find you? Pretty much everywhere as Seth Goldstein, except for when I'm Philly Code Hound. Okay. <laughs> My friend, the Philly Code Hound. <laughs> yes, I used to be Philly News Hound when I was a journalist. So. And then, I yeah, and, and I hopefully we'll, we'll have some um, broadcasts for um, Philly Tech Org from the Philadelphia Dog Show this week. Which so make sure to check it out. You know, we'll have it on FillyTech.org. Um, also, um, just to give a shout out to a few of our other shows, a few of our other shows that we do on the network, we're going to have a Gadget Dogs podcast hosted by Jody Rains. That's coming up. We're also going to have a show called Philly Drone Tech, hosted by a friend of mine called, named Tom. He's, he's called Tom. <laughs> <laughs> um, he, he's, he's a drone aficionado. Not the creepy drones, the drones that you know, he can do fun things with and tricks. Um, we also have screencast sessions, which is when I go into a new app and I explain it and show you around. We, of course, we have the interview show, which I can tell you right now is exploding with interviews. Mm -hmm. I have interviews every single week. It's a weekly podcast, so you're not going to get a deluge of show after show after show. I'm going to release them slowly, but it's our, it's our version of the triangulation show that's on Twit, only I think ours is better. <laughs> um, we also have social media addicts, of course, and then we have two other shows, Rants and Rambles, where you know you get pretty much get to listen to me bitch moan and, and whine about stuff that, that isn't that I'm not happy with or that I want to ramble on about. You know, the latest is about the fully tech scene and how it needs to be less insular and more inclusive of the surrounding areas around Philadelphia. And then we have Founders Corner, which is pretty much you know Jody and myself 
giving an update on the network and where we're going. So check us out on iTunes, Pocket Casts, Stitcher. You can subscribe to our RSS feed. And um, we are looking for sponsors. So if you guys want to, if you guys know of a company that wants to sponsor us, we are always willing to take more sponsors. And also check us on patreon.com slash social media. No, it's social media addicts. Patreon.com slash org. Um, any support you can get would be wonderful because this is bootstrapped by me and Jody. So take care, guys. Have a wonderful week. Thanks for listening.